SpaceX is having a tough week. The company is struggling with its launch vehicles, and most recently, SpaceX had to inspect its orbital launch mount following the latest static fire on B7. As Kevin Randolph said, crispy OLM after the 11 engine approximately 13 second static fire test. Not unexpected, but still, gonna need a new coat of paint and such. Other than that, how did the new concrete hold up under the OLM? Well, it rained concrete again despite fewer engines testing this time, and frankly, I'm really getting worried if they can do a full static fire test for 20 seconds, or even a real full launch. It's more than likely that SpaceX will have to end up using something other than concrete, especially if they want rapid reusability. On the other hand, SpaceX is also having problems with its workhorse rocket. For the second time in less than two weeks, SpaceX has indefinitely delayed a Falcon 9 launch after discovering apparent issues with the rocket less than a day before liftoff. Japanese startup iSpace's misfortune also marks the eighth time in less than two months that SpaceX has delayed or aborted a Falcon 9 launch for unspecified technical reasons less than 24 hours before liftoff. The streak of delays is unusual after 12 months of record-breaking execution, over the course of which SpaceX has successfully completed 60 orbital launches with just a handful of last-minute technical delays. The number of last-day delays in Falcon 9 launch aborts has abruptly skyrocketed in recent months, possibly indicating that a single problem or change is at least partially responsible for the trend. The streak began in early October and has continued through the end of November, resulting in eight delays in two months, with impacts ranging from minutes to days or even weeks. In all but one instance, SpaceX's only explanation was a need for more time for data review or checkouts of the rocket, its payload, or both. SpaceX consistently announces launch delays on Twitter, making it possible to collate with the company has stated it was standing down from a launch attempt or now targeting a later launch date for technical reasons. In the more than 18 months between March of 2021 and October of 2022, SpaceX announced only three technical delays after publicly scheduling a launch, one last second abort, and two minor additional checkouts delays. Adding to the oddity, SpaceX reported at least 15 similar delays between January of 2020 and March of 2021. A decrease in the frequency of technical issues is a generally expected outcome of a competent organization gaining experience with the operation of a complex new system like a launch vehicle. By all appearances, that's the pattern SpaceX was following, a drastic drop in the number of technical launch aborts even as the pace of Falcon 9 launches soar to new heights. But within the last few months, the frequency of technical delays has skyrocketed from close to zero to higher than any point in recent SpaceX history. Without context, it's impossible to say if there is an invisible thread connecting the recent string of delays. There are many possible explanations, including workforce fatigue, management changes, policy changes, and factory issues. It's even possible that the seemingly sudden onset was caused by an intentional change of risk posture. For example, increasing sensitivity to off-nominal signals that had been observed before, but were discounted enough to avoid launch delays. As part of its effort to continually improve existing systems and processes, SpaceX could have changed things too much or removed one too many steps. While unlikely, it's also possible that the recent uptick in delays is merely a coincidence. Regardless, if the trend continues, it will be difficult for SpaceX to increase its launch cadence any further, particularly toward CEO Elon Musk's stated goal of 100 launches in 2023. Delays also increase launch costs and disrupt customer plans, incentivizing a return to smoother operations as quickly as possible. What's most concerning is a recent pair of unrelated launches that have become indefinitely delayed. Starlink 2-4, which was first scheduled to launch on November 18th, has yet to receive a new launch date after SpaceX apparently discovered problems after a Falcon 9 static fire test on November 17th. Less than two weeks later, SpaceX has indefinitely delayed a second Falcon 9 launch, which was the Japanese startup iSpace's first moon landing attempt after further inspections of the launch vehicle and data review. Ultimately, launch delays are a fundamental part of spaceflight, and it's better to keep a rocket on the ground when there is any uncertainty about its readiness for flight. Nonetheless, big changes in the frequency of delays are still noteworthy, especially when SpaceX itself does not typically explain the cause of delays for non-NASA missions. 
SpaceX has several more Falcon 9 launches firmly scheduled in December. It remains to be seen how exactly the indefinite delays of Starlink 2-4 and Hakuto R will impact those upcoming launches. Starlink 4-37, for example, was scheduled to launch from the same pad as Hakuto R as early as December 6th, but that date will slip for every day Hakuto R is delayed. A SpaceX ship tasked with recovering Hakuto R's Falcon 9 fairing appears to be heading back to port, indicating a delay of at least two or three days. In the meantime, let's switch over to NASA's Artemis 1. What's all the buzz about Artemis 1? Well, the Orion spacecraft is coming home. Artemis 1 launched on November 16th from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on the inaugural flight of the Space Launch System Moon rocket, which is a 322-foot tall or 98-meter behemoth that took a decade and more than $22 billion to develop. Another $5.4 billion in the same period went toward preparing Kennedy Space Center's ground infrastructure for SLS and Orion missions. For now, the uncrewed Orion spacecraft successfully completed a lunar departure burn on Thursday, December 1st, to begin heading home after successful moon orbits. The burn began at 4.54 p.m. Eastern and lasted just under two minutes, according to NASA television commentator Shaniqua Vereen. Orion has had a successful and nominal 1 minute and 45 second distant retrograde orbit departure burn, Berene announced during the agency's broadcast of the burn. The spacecraft's solar panels could be seen gently rocking back and forth on NASA television's live broadcast as a tiny Earth glowed in the background. Orion now begins its 10-day trek home, and if all goes according to plan, the capsule will splash down in the Pacific off the coast of California on December 11th. NASA and the United States Navy have already begun training for the recovery operation that will mark the end of the Artemis 1 mission. According to NASA, so far Artemis 1 has met its benchmarks. Mission managers announced on Wednesday, November 30th, that the November 16th launch of SLS showed the vehicle performed exactly as intended. The first launch of the Space Launch System rocket was simply eye-watering. While our mission with Orion is still underway and we continue to learn over the course of our flight, the rocket systems performed as designed and as expected in every case, Artemis mission manager Mike Serafin said. And so, if all goes as planned, the next mission, Artemis 2, will launch astronauts into orbit around the moon in 2024. NASA will then return astronauts to the moon no earlier than 2025 with Artemis 3. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.